and mom on today's show i am telling you you're going to leave with a lot of information you're going to be educated you're going to have so much fun and you will be inspired so don't go anywhere sit back relax because we'll be right back for more on kids and mom Drop your comments and questions on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. And we're back. On the show today, we will be learning about tech coding for children. Some moms would ask, exactly what is Yeli talking about? Well, it's time for you to learn something new. On the show with me today is someone that has experience and has passion for this. Her name is Omolaye Chioma, and she is the founder of Tech Edu Hub, a private technology education company. Tech Edu Hub trains kids in the 21st century in technology skills that they need to acquire for their future. She's a graduate of marketing from the Ebony State University. She is a certified machine learning engineer and she has done a lot of work. She is married to Omolaye Daniel and they are blessed with a daughter. Chioma, welcome to Kids and Mom. Thank you for having me. Now, I'm very interested in your story because you are a graduate of marketing, but you are a computer programmer. So how did the passion switch come about? Okay, thank you. Um, so I studied marketing in school and I had my career um, in advertising. Um, but I began to have a flair for big data. Okay. okay so um, I had to um, take the shot um, three years ago. Uh, so I delved into big data and there are softwares and technology that you need um, to crunch big data. Okay. And like you know, they say data is oil. Uh, it's a new oil, right? Okay, so um, in learning those softwares and also the skills to maneuver big data, you have to also learn programming. Mm. Okay, so that is how I delved into programming. I loved it um, and what it could achieve. Um, so with programming, yes, you can use it to crunch big data using some softwares. With um, programming, you can also use it to create applications. Okay. So that's in a short how I got there. <laughs> mm. All right, so um, could you tell a five-year-old watching the show today what computer programming is? Okay, so five-year-olds <laughs> and above. Uh, computer programming is when you... Um, communicate to the computer so we all use our mobile phones we all use um, our laptops uh, mommy's laptops uh, mommy's phone to play games um, so computer programs actually build those games that uh, we're playing today computer programs also build um, the cartoons the animations that you're watching um, on your mommy's phone uh, computer program in fact almost Every electronic device is controlled by computer programs. All applications are controlled by computer programs. So what's computer programming, like I said? It is when you actually communicate to um, a computer or a system um, to perform some certain task. And in programming, there are codes. Okay, so the same way we want to communicate as adults or as human beings, we communicate in English language. The computer doesn't understand English language, you understand codes. Codes are the language of computers and so there are different kinds of coding language. You can use Python, you can use Java, JavaScript and there are text-based um, coding languages and there are block-based coding languages. Okay. Um, yes. So, yeah. Alright, well that's a lot of information. Um, and I'm sure a lot of um, um, children are very excited and they're very interested in what you're saying. Now there is this um, term I'm hearing, a STEM robot for kids. Okay. Now what is a STEM robot for kids? Okay, so first of all, STEM is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Okay, so um, 
it is actually really not until these children grow up and enter the university and have their major in computer science before they start learning these things. Okay. okay. So there is a way, um, especially in the international community, thank God for them, thank God for the big brands. Um, they have um, liberalized these things, um, you know, for us to be able to introduce them even to the young ones from four years, five years, you know, and above. So when we talk about STEM robot, what's a robot? A robot is, um, it could be a drone, a flying robot, um, you know, but you use programming to um, tell it what to do. Okay. Okay, so yeah. So there are robot cars, mm -hmm. yeah, like I said, a drone is a flying robot. So so we see, for me, I use robots um, to teach kids how to code because coding can be very abstract. Okay. You know, you type, you type, or you do whatever. But just imagine that they are coding and they are seeing the effect of that code. By the end of this program, I'm going to show an example of a built code, okay, okay. and a, a flying robot, which is a drone that will take flight. Okay. So that is the way um, I introduce kids, um, you know, to coding. When we code, they see it take effect. Okay. Then they begin to understand the world around them. All right. Then they begin, yeah, that's basically it. All right, so um, you've spoken, you know, a lot about the coding language and yes. the fact that Coding is the language at which you communicate to the computer yes. what you want it to do. Absolutely. So how would you introduce children to coding mm -hmm. and programming? Okay, great. Um, so I mentioned before there's a block-based, the visual-based kind of coding, and we're going to see it shortly, and there's a text-based kind of coding. Okay, the one we type, okay? When we say print in brackets, we'll put our inverted comma and all of that. So they are the Python, the JavaScript, but the block-based kind of coding uh, is what we use to introduce kids to coding. So it's a drag and drop. It's a drag and drop. Okay. But understanding how to build the drag and drops, the different drag and drops, which will be seen shortly, you know, it's um, the concept also applies to the real, the text-based uh, kind of coding. Okay. So yes, we use um, block-based uh, kind of coding. We use Scratch. Uh, we use NAP, we use Blockly, um, we go to, we, we search for curriculums online, the free ones on code.org, um, there is IBM um, Digital Academy, there's Microsoft Education, so we, um, we use all of those curriculum and block-based kind of coding to launch kids into coding. Mm. And afterwards, we then introduce them into the text-based kind of coding. And in learning the text-based kind of coding, they learn it in a fun-loving way. So um, they engage with games, computer games. They are not playing it this time. They are actually creating the games by themselves. And when they even play those games, they use coding, the real text-based kind of coding, to create and play those games. So okay. in that way, yes. Um, All right. Shema, do you think there are apps that can teach children to code or program? Yes, there are apps and yeah, they sit on Google Play Store. I mean, if you just go to Google Play Store and type um, coding apps, I'm sure you will see a lot of it. But um, recently I've been using Grasshopper, Google Grasshopper. Um, it teaches um, kids coding. Um, so there are web applications like I mentioned, there's Scratch, there's Blockly, so all of those are apps that we use to teach kids coding. Now what are the benefits of learning how to program? Okay, um, I like to explain this from the generation, I like to give a history of generation. Okay. So there's the generation of our great grandfathers, we like to call them the baby boomers, that's what they are called. And then down, there's a generation X, there's generation Y, uh, which we belong to, my age belong to. And then there's generation Z. Um, generation Z are the kind of people born from 1995 um, down to yeah, 2019. Now, this generation is categorized by their heavy usage of smart devices, of mobile devices. Like my daughter, she's three years old. She already knows how to use the mobile. They are the generation mobile and <laughs> generation smart devices, okay? So they are the generation smart devices. 
and all over the world, um, in US um, and in very much um, advanced country, they are teaching kids the skills so that they are able to what these applications that they are always using, these applications they are always playing with, they are able to build it also. Okay, because at the end of the day, nobody is writing on the chalkboard, nobody is writing anything on the board. So everything, even health, is going to application. So for you to be able to maneuver and even manage applications, whether you're a product manager, not everybody will end up as a computer programmer. But they need to understand it so that tomorrow, mm. if they are called to say, come and be a marketing manager in an application company, do they even understand what an app is made up of? Okay. No, not everybody is going to be an engineer. And we're not saying STEM will completely um, take over the world, you know? So, but in the future of work for these children, for this generation Z, it is such that um, the organizations they are going to be working with in the future mm -hmm. will be 50 to 80 percent dependent on tech. Okay. And they need to fit in. They need to adapt. Yes. That aside that, it also helps their uh, what you call their logical thinking. It helps their problem solving skills. Okay. Okay. So um, just imagine we are building the robot. Something happens along the line. They know how to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. So, and also ultimately, like I've mentioned in terms of uh, talking about generations, it's going to help them in the future to gain um, a good employment because their future of work, okay, there's a Microsoft article called Future of Work. So I like to use Future of Work, you know, so much. So their, their future of work is such that the companies that they are going to work with when they are 20 years old, they are five now, they are six, they are ten, but when they are twenty out of school and all of that, the future of work for them is so much so, it's already buzzing now. So just imagine in 15 years more time, you know, it's already, uh, what's it called, their future of work is such that um, if they don't acquire these coding and programming skills, they are not going to fit in anywhere. Mm. They are not, parents should understand that. They should understand that, you know. So, so an world average world child, world. Yes. an average child should learn how to code. Yes, they should be learning. So even if it's just the basics, they need to be able yes. to. So what you're saying is that in, in the future, every possible employment or business would need some level of technology behind Absolutely. it. Absolutely. The truth is that the way they ask you, do you have uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, can you do PowerPoint, that is the same way it's going to be coming up for oh, them in the wow. future. Yes. That's so enlightening. Okay, so we need to take a quick break right now. And when we come back, Chioma will demonstrate into us the power of coding, right? Absolutely. I, okay, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Drop your comments and questions on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. And we are back. Now, Chioma is here to demonstrate to us how um, children could use coding to achieve anything. Do you understand? And she's just going to demonstrate to us the power and you know the effect that programming would have. Chioma, over to you. Thank you very much. So like I mentioned, uh, we like to introduce kids first with a block-based kind of coding. And like I said also that um, I like to use robotics as we teach them coding. So this is an example of block-based um, kind of coding. Um, so we're going to make this mini, um, this drone um, is a flying robot. We're going to make it take off. Okay, so the, the big adult drones, we use um, remote controls and there are some older um, playful drones that we use remote control to but that doesn't teach coding, right? It doesn't teach programming. So with this, without our remote control, we're going to see this drone take flight and land safely. Okay, so this is a Bluetooth board, okay? And this is the, let's say, the coding software, mm -hmm. okay, that we use, okay? Um, so we need um, to connect the Bluetooth board because the code needs to speak to this and this, 
Bluetooth board needs to speak to this, okay? Okay. So that is how it works. And so, you put it from the system yeah, to absolutely. the Bluetooth board, and then the Bluetooth board speaks to the drone. Exactly. So, okay. The drone. And so this is a battery of um, the drone, which we'll just insert in here. See it blinking. Oh. All of these lights are sensors. Okay. okay. So, okay, let's see. Um, uh, so, please hold on. So, the first thing um, with block based kind of coding, we have this um, block called when clicked. So, whatever program we're, we're building underneath, when we are done building, when we want it to take action, we'll click when flag is clicked when green flag is clicked, right? Okay. Okay, so then, before then, I, this is just to show you how it works. We need to connect our core drone, and so connect to the nearest drone, and we look for it to come forth. Okay. So as we have done the physical input, we just need to pair them okay. using the software. Okay. I hope everyone is learning. I hope children, you're mm -hmm. learning as you're watching Chioma demonstrate this to us. Okay, so you're searching for the device. So what it does is mm -hmm. you'd look for the device first absolutely after you switch on the drone you switch on the drone and you switch on the bluetooth board so the drone and the bluetooth board are connected already so or this is now what i am doing now the searching is the connection the connect, from absolutely. the bluetooth to the drone absolutely. fantastic so yes you can see it says it was connected to the following device okay so it has seen it oh perfect so we say okay and then we'll begin to build our program now, right? So we'll just build a simple program to make it fly, stay for five seconds and land. Okay. And in doing that, we go to our core drone block. Um, we, we plug the flight event to it. Okay. On that when clicked, which is the first block of any um, block-based kind of coding. There is always a when something is clicked, you know, um, execute it. So we will do our takeoff and then we will go to control and tell it to wait. So it, when it takes off, otherwise if we just do take off and land, it just, you know, so let's wait for five seconds and then before we go back to the flight event and we see it land safely. Okay. So this these are one, two, three, four, just four blocks will make this uh, take flight and come down. Right. So now we're going to click when flag is clicked. Okay. And it takes off. It takes off. Are you ready? Five seconds. See if you can count if you're watching. So I'm going to click the when clicked and let's see the drone fly take off for five seconds and okay. safely land. Oh my gosh. Ooh, nice. Do you want to see it again? Yes. Yeah, so, so just with four blocks of so uh, code. Uh, nice! So an okay, okay, so we'll just take it again and remove my laptop. Alright, so that's that right. it lands on there. Oh, wow. Is anybody counting? It looks like. Four, it. five. Yes! Mm -hmm. on that. Yes, fantastic. That was awesome. So wow. So parents should enroll their kids in their schools 
for schools that are taking coding classes. Okay. They should, you know, any opportunity during the summer, they see coding lessons. Okay. Please, they should take those kids. Um, the, what's it called now? For people that are programmers now, um, they learned these things at a very young age. Mm. Most of them have that testimony. Someone that I know learned it while he was in GS3, and that has fetched him good paying job even before entering university. A very good paying job. He has not seen the walls of the university, but he resumes work on the island twice a week, and I know how much he's being paid. So okay. please, um, it, it's a way also to also help the economy and uh, to help Nigeria so that we attain that advancement so that we'll stop being called um, a less advanced um, country. Okay. We're called uh, you know, advanced country. And technology is very key for any nation to advance. Okay. Well, Choma, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for the advice that you've given parents and children. We want to say thank you for showing us and demonstrating to us the cool things that kids can do with coding. Well, I hope everyone watching today, I've been blown away by what I've seen. And this is just so cool. And this is really, really important. Technology is very, very important in the development and the future of our children. Drop your comments and questions on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. My name is Jerry BD. Um, I'm in GS3 and I attend Brilliant Child College. I come from a family of four, my junior sister and my parents. Um, I'm not a very quiet person. I like to make people around me happy. Um, I disturb people a lot. I love disturbing people and I love it when people around me just smile because it makes me feel very good and I also love defending people's rights. I would love to become a lawyer. I just have a passion for it. I feel um, it feels really good to defend people's rights, you know, to make them know their rights. And it, it makes me feel very bad when I see people, children, when their rights are violated. So I would like to put a stop to all that. When I get to senior secondary class, I'll have to go to art class and do a lot of studying. Then when I get on to the university, I'll go into law. Then after that, I'll go to law school to learn more about it. Um, God Almighty, first of all, and my mom. She's my biggest role model. And Mrs. Kate Muli. She's She has played a very big role in my life and I thank her for that. I love singing, I love dancing, and I love playing. Because all of me loves all of you. Loves your curves and all your edges. All your perfect imperfections Give your all to me And I'll give my all to you You're my end and my beginning Even when I lose and winning Cause I give you all, all of me And you give me all, all of you kids care segment today I'll be sharing with you how to help your children make friends I have some points here that I believe will help in doing that and making it a reality for your child to be happy and for you to be happy as a parent in terms of the friends that your children keep so number one I thought about being friendly how can you help your children to be friendly what are the things you can say to them that could help them to become better friends and to make more friends so they could smile more they could give compliments you know, they could be willing to share whatever it is, maybe their toys, you know, their, their, I don't know, time with their friends. Number two, attending their friends' parties. So I believe sometimes they get invited to parties. I think we should make it a priority to see, do all you can do to help them to be able to attend the parties. And also they could choose the gift items for the friends' party as well. Number three, giving gifts. Even if it's not a birthday party, you know, they could give gifts to their friends. 
it doesn't have to be a birthday to celebrate, you know. We could compliment each other, you know, and I believe giving gifts will help in Judah. And they could give compliments as well, you know. I like your uniform or it's iron today or your hair is nice or the ribbon on their hair or the shoes, you know, they could compliment them. I think it's a good thing for us to do as parents to help our children to do. So another tip is setting up a play date. And what does that involve? It's basically asking your, fr your child, you know, who would they like to come visit this weekend? So the person could come over and you would agree with the parents, you know, the suitable date and a time and also for collection as well. And it's always a good idea to give a present when the person is leaving. It just makes the child happy and makes your child happy as well. And the last but not the least point is visit their friends. So since the friends have come over to visit, I think it's a good idea for you to allow your child to go and visit their friends as well. So with these five points that I've just mentioned, I believe it will help and to make your child friendlier and for them to make friends. I'm just going to recap it again so that you remember the five points I've shared with you. Number one, be friendly. And like I said, to be friendly, you need, you need to smile more, you need to be happy, you need to be willing to share. Number two, attend parties. And also give your child the opportunity um, to be able to pick up the gift for the party as well. Number three, give gifts. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a birthday to celebrate. They could celebrate their friends because it's Friends Day. Um, number four, set up play dates. And also, the last but not the least, is to visit their friends. Thank you for listening to this segment today. Bye for now. We've come to the end of the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure you learned something. I'm sure you left this, you're leaving the show today with something. So until we come your way again, same station, same time, from me and everyone else here, it's bye for now.